All right. Whenever you're ready. All right. I'm ready. Let's do this. Uh, it's another day. It's another episode of the Nadine and Mandy show. I'm Nadine. And I'm Mandy. And what do we have going on today? Um, from the looks of this run sheet, a lot. <laughs> um, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay. That's all I got. How about you? All righty. Just so good. That's that's lying. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Like right. off the bat, before we do roses, thorns, what have you, like I'm showing up pretty authentically today. Um, feeling like hot garbage, not like emotionally or physically, just like you ever just feel like a, a wet bag. Yep. Not like the Katy Perry plastic bag, you know. I feel like a wet paper bag that someone has been stepping on for three days. That's how I look. I got acne going on. I just don't feel very fergalicious. So, all right. I'm looking to perk myself up with a combo with my bestie. All right. Well, <laughs> let's let's try this. So, for those of you that this is your first episode, we start every episode with a segment called Rose Thorn Bud. A rose is a positive highlight, a thorn is a struggle or a challenge, and a bud is an opportunity for improvement or something that we're looking forward to. So that being said, let's try perking you up by talking about your rose. We'll get to the rose first. Good. That will perk me up. That was, like I said, how I've been feeling like just blah about everything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Had a concert to go to last week on a Tuesday night. An hour and a half away from my house. On a school night. On a school night. And I'm like, I wasn't looking forward to it. Like, I was, but I wasn't. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you want to go in theory, but you want your conditions to be more ideal. Like, to not be Tuesday. uh, To have a designated driver, maybe. Or to not be an hour and a half away. That, too. That if it wasn't on a Tuesday, I probably wouldn't give a shit because long drives cool for listening to podcasts. I had um, a bunch of man whore podcasts in my queue to keep me company on the way there and back. But the John Eddie show, that was the concert that I went to. He's um, kind of a local thing. He had some hits in the 80s. Um, I was introduced to him from... Uh, my friend Bernie, her parents, big fans since like the 80s. And then we started being old enough to go to bars. So, you know, you go to bars with parents and like they still have this weird parental urge to like provide and do nice. And like, it's so weird when like <laughs> parents buy you liquor. <laughs> like, oh, uh, you used to see me play with Barbies and now I'm really drunk in public. But that didn't happen this past Tuesday, obviously. I had some waffle fries and uh, like one or two cocktails. I don't remember. But the show was awesome. It felt like old times. Like it felt like the good old days for a little bit where like I had thought um, once a pandemic happened that I might not see a show like you got a face going on and i i'm interested what's happening what later on um our producer added a note (sighs) motherfucker! (laughs) (laughs) oh this is gonna be a good one today (laughs) capital a capital good capital one all right so i had fun at the concert Um, These guys are in their 60s now, so I didn't think I would get to see them again after a pandemic. They all made it through, thank fucking God, and they still rock just as fucking hard as before. There you go. So good. Um, Maybe we'll, I'll put a little outro, I'll put a John Eddy show up, I mean a song up at the end of this, indoctrinate more people. They'll know where to find me if he's ever local to uh, the Jersey area, so. Sounds good. What's your rose? Um, Mine is kind of similar. Um, We found a new, like, location. It's um, a bar that's maybe a mile and a half away from us. Um, They did an 80s dance party. They're doing an emo night next month. Um, Super cheap booze. Like, 
love it. It's very cute, very like cozy. So we're excited. How cheap is the booze? Like cheap enough it would justify me getting a plane ticket and coming out for the weekend or what? The two of us drank pretty heavily. <laughs> uh, and with tip, it was $81 for the whole night. For a whole night out. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And we each had three shots and probably five drinks each. So that's a good meal deal right there. Mm hmm. It warranted needing an Uber. So that you have to. Got to be responsible. Yes. I love that. Love to hear it. Just like my night out. We both had nights out as our roses apparently yeah uh designated driver i stopped drinking like two hours i had two cocktails i was fine to drive no matter what but i stopped drinking well ahead of like leaving mm-hmm. time and had some fry cheese fries actually my wisconsin girly god give me respect for the queso right of course always and uh yeah don't drink and drive folks it ain't worth it you're grown fucking grow up all right Exactly. Act right. So, uh, do you want to do thorn Let, or bud? Let's do... You go first with your thorn. Okay. What's up? So, um, last year, I fought back and forth with this one company who one of the Peloton instructors has, like, clothing with. Mm-hmm. And at first, the clothing only went up to extra large. And then after, like, letting my opinion known and whatnot, the instructor was telling me that she's, like, pushing for extra, extra large, which in the grand scheme of things isn't being size inclusive, but it's a little no. bit better. It's a little better, you know. For I mean, you. For me. For me, yes. But not for, for everyone. Um, But she came out with another line and it came out again that it only went up to extra large even though all of like their paperwork and stuff like they accidentally released their wholesale information oh and they got the stuff yeah and well on on there it says xxl but nothing was given in xxl so yet again it's 2023 and I'm fighting for the bare minimum of size inclusivity. Bare minimum. Yeah, it's it's a hard fight. Like when it comes to major stores and stuff like that where they're not really engaging, you know, their mm-hmm. customers, you know, you're engaging as a fan and a niche community and there should be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, pandering. But this, okay, so the two sides to this are that we need to separate the instructor from the company. That's okay. Because the instructor was also under the impression that it was at least going to go to XXL. So when this was all released and the sizes didn't go up to at least extra, extra large, she, it was news to her as well. Mm. Yeah, because. They don't have a lot of control or involvement in, like, the actual procurement. So Exactly. Fucking sucks. Yes. And this company is just one of those notorious companies that don't – they just don't have a lot of um, sizes. Mm Mm-hmm. But um, with me speaking up and I got some people to also send emails, so hopefully it's at least a step in the right direction. But, again – why is why do we have to have this fight in 2023? Why do you have to fight to give them your money? Exactly. That's what I said, too. So, like, but- you want to be part of this. They should want you to be part of this. Not just because, like, you want a cool shirt, but, like, you're wearing that out. That's free advertising, you know? And it just, like, brought me back to high school where, like, my friends would go to, like, all of those stores and... All I could do was look at the socks or the sunglasses or the oh, earrings. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll meet you guys at Claire's, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be at Yankee Candle because, <laughs> you know, candles don't discriminate by size. No. Gotta get those three wicks, know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounded way more sexual than it needed to. I mean, I just went with it. so I I'm not taking three wicks at once. Two, I think, <laughs> would be my limit. Mm. 
Wow, that is quite a thorn. <laughs> All right, speaking um, of thorns, what is yeah. yours? What did I put here? Because I couldn't put everything feels crappy and I don't like it. But um, I have been like starting and stopping trying to get a gym routine going because I think I prematurely like joined because they had like a special at the Y by me, whereas like, oh, no joining fee or whatever. So I did that real quick and then I just like couldn't get my ball rolling on it and I'm still not. And it's like, I'm trying to recapture lightning in a bottle in a sense, like what got me hyped before it's not getting me hyped now. So, so what would get you hyped now? I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Because I think that's what ultimately you need to figure out is like is it a class is it a machine is it getting in the water like and it's also like the vulnerability of like admitting that I feel uncomfortable because I don't feel like I have my bearings at that place yet I don't feel like I know if I go I'll start to feel like a regular it's a double-edged sword Mm -hmm. but like I don't know man just like but okay with the why there's classes I'm assuming all week yeah and that's why I joined this one because it had availability of classes that I wanted to take then just commit yourself to one class a week don't, okay don't go all out don't go five days a week for two hours a day pick one class and start from there and that will kind of get that ball rolling yeah it's kind of like with our with OMAT how the one minute leads to more minutes mm-hmm. I just got to do one yep just just go once and I'm sure it'll pick it up <sighs> thank you for your wisdom I needed <laughs> to hear that I will look into a class report to you about when I'm going and then you follow up with me afterwards I, will. I need some kind of accountability. <laughs> and pick something fun. Don't pick, like, the hardest class ever. Like, I mean, I know you loved Body Pump. Oh, yeah. I love that shit. But maybe don't start with that. I could go back to it and start light. I don't have to yes. go back to my old lifting yes. thing. So, but just remember, you know, unfortunately, it's like starting all over again. So don't. I hope that they do like the good music and not like the kind of generic track music because that was I like that Mm -hmm. because then when you hear like something that's normal or popular that like maybe only heard in class and then you're out in society and you hear like a gym song and you're like oh my god why is my heart racing you're like your body remembers that you're I, about to get punished. I felt that way about Zumba songs. So I never liked Zumba. I was into it for a little bit, but I also did. I liked dancing with the oldies or sweating with the oldies. Like I liked all that stuff. That's so. cute though. I, it was more of a perception thing where the places where I would take Zumba, they would have like, it was a whole mirrored room, you know, how gym studios are. So all I see is, like, me flailing around rhythmically, you know. I'm not – I don't have rhythm. I'm not a good dancer. And all I see is me just, like, jiggling around from every angle is a nightmare. (laughs) That does sound like a nightmare. Like, if I – like, luckily the rooms I did it in didn't have mirrors, which is probably why I enjoyed it a little more. Yeah. So. Just being stuck in mirrored rooms, it's weird. I can't like not look at me. Even right now, I'm looking at me in the stupid Zoom. I don't want to see this. Can I hide me? That would be ideal, honestly. <laughs> no, no, and no. So now that we've dipped a little bit, let's bring you back up and talk about your bud. Guess what? I just hid self view, so I don't have to look at me. I just see you. I like oh, this better. <laughs> my apologies. Shut up. <laughs> so what is my bud? 
Oh, okay. So as mentioned, uh, previous episode, I got the cricket machine where I'm making stuff. So I, um, started making a couple things. I did my test project. I made a little water bottle for Lizzie's gymnastics class. I did, um, a plate for a prize for my company's picnic thing. Even though we didn't have the contest, I still made it anyway. And I gave it to someone who made um, brownies from a box mix. No shade, except like usually that wouldn't win you a prize to bring home. No, no, no. But you know what? If I like you and your box brownies came out just fine, congratulations. You are the winner. Exactly. And um, so I'm trying to learn new uh, cricket skills. And... I don't know where to look yet. I don't know what to do. I just tried doing something a little while ago and it turns out like I was using my iPad with the design space, like it's the program you use with it and certain projects I can't do on there. So I have to like dig my laptop out and install it on there and whatever. But if anyone has any suggestions of people to follow or a cool you know, starter projects, whatever you got, I would like to know about it. I mean, it's going good so far, but I would just like to learn one project at a time, you know? Okay. Very cool. What about you? What's your, what's your bud, buddy? I'm actually like really, really excited. Oh, I can't wait to hear. So, uh, as I mentioned last week, Peloton Chicago, or Peloton is coming to Chicago. And on the Saturday night, so not tomorrow from the day this is aired, Mm -hmm. a week from tomorrow, um, they have something called the Leaderboard Awards, which Mm -hmm. uh, other people, like, get to nominate you based on, like, if you're, like, a good community person or if you've had a comeback or whatnot. And I found out yesterday that I'm getting one. Oh, my God. It's a major award. It is a major award. And you totally deserve it. You are, like, the community cheerleader for your little hashtag group. It's so cool. I'm really excited. I'll get, like, this poster of all of the instructors that's autographed. And I get to, like, meet the five of them. And, like, there's a box of apparel apparently coming. Cool. Like, I'm just, I'm really excited. So. You should frame that poster and put it by, like, your workout area. It comes framed, actually. Oh, moving on up. I like it. So, so, yeah, I'm excited. So, more to come. I'm sure I'll be able to say more about the experience next week. But Yeah, this is, like, a good one to look forward to. I yes. like this. And that whole day is going to be kind of cool because I'll be getting CJ ready for his first homecoming dance. Oh, my gosh. So... Um, he's going to go with a group of his friends, actually him and his best friend, who is a female who she's not sure if she's bi or lesbian. Everybody, that's not, that's th- every- not for you to talk about. No, no, no. But <laughs> everybody thinks they're dating. Oh, so they're going as a couple just to, just to like fuck with everyone. Oh, I like it. So I yeah, like it. That's why I'm talking about her. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, don't don't out her. Don't she <laughs> she had she had a crush on Christian last year until he was like, um, you're not my type at all. Uh yeah, the type that he likes is uh gender specific, unfortunately for her. Yeah, but then they became besties and they fall asleep on the phone talking almost every night and whatnot. Aww. So it's very cute. But yeah. I hope she's still not secretly pining for him. If she is, she's barking up that wrong tree. <laughs> I know. Just like the whole, when you said the whole falling asleep on the phone thing, I'm like, oh my God, she better not keep falling for her gay bestie. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's but, so fun for him. I can't yeah. believe he's like, like really, really in high school. Yeah. I know, he- we know he's in high school, but like super duper doing cliche high school things is so cute and it's just i it's really cool to see him becoming his own person because like he wants to wear the outfit that he wore for eighth grade graduation except he wants a red tie and he wants fingerless fishnet gloves oh my gosh that's a style it's a look so i mean you do you 
So it's just, it's kind of cool to see him kind of growing into his own yeah. person. So, yeah, when it comes to kids' outfits, we give, you give them latitude to express themselves. Well, except uh, earlier today when Lizzie and uh, Mike were leaving for swimming lessons, she's wearing a long sleeve shirt with like pumpkin spice prints on it um, and really short blue booty shorts. I'm like, I don't think that's the move. No. Not just because you look really, no, uh, the matching's not there. It's not warm. Exactly. It's- definitely autumn it's been raining here for days like i mean i guess the only benefit to like wearing little booty shorts out when it's a rainy day you won't get the bottoms of your pants wet very true but no he um he saw that i had like these fishnet gloves for 80s night and he was like those are pretty cool can i have those oh my gosh are you guys sharing no they're his now i'm good okay (laughs) so all right do we have any updates from the last episode? Um, so Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis posted an apology video. I'm like, oh, uh, we shouldn't have done that. And they were like doing the whole video in front of their like, you know, humble room wall, like which every celebrity seems to have. It's like, here's my shit room that isn't too ostentatious. So I look like uh you know, I'm a little bit humbled. I'm a person of the people and you could connect with me. Like for the way it looks like, it looks like they just pulled down one of the backgrounds from like picture people photo studio. And it's like, give me some ship lap. I heard the people like that. As we're talking in front of two backgrounds from picture people. Well, yeah, it's only because I just want to hide the family portrait behind me. That's not for everyone. <laughs> Exactly. But my um, girl did pick the laser background this year for her school photo. Christian wanted the lasers again, but I was like, you just did the lasers last year. So we picked mm-hmm. a, a cool, I don't know what it is, but it, it's cool. So whatever. Oh, can I talk some shit? Uh, all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, all this is is talking shit. Yeah. The company that did my daughter's school photos. Did I mention this last time? No. No is the company I used to work for and they're pieces of fucking garbage. The owner just like, here's what ended it for me. Um, Like just everyone was treated poorly there. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I overheard him calling everyone who worked in the warehouse portion of the company, the welfare crew, because they're all not alabaster people, if you know what I'm saying. Yep. Like, oh my God, this is the worst. And I wish nothing good for them, like literally. So the fact that I had to like patronize this company because, you know, it's school pictures, hate it. So that's all the shit I have to talk is I'm not even going to name them publicly. I just not pleased that they uh, took over for whatever company was doing this last year. Noted. Usually you could speak with your you could speak with your wallet, but they know they got you by the balls because they know you want this cool picture. Exactly. All right. What about you? Any updates from the last episode? Um, there's something wrong with me. I just don't know what it is. So there we go. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw a doctor who's pretty who was pretty sure that it could be MS. But lab work is showing more lupus. So mm. waiting for a rheumatologist, uh, waiting until December. But bottom line is, is my white blood cell count is low. So my body is pretty much attacking itself. So hooray. Yeah, there's something wrong with you, as they said. I mean, more than the <laughs> obvious. So at least we could be pithy about it. right? Ex- exactly. I mean. It is what it is. I can't change it. So I'm just going to keep dealing with it until I figure out what it is and how to get it better. So You deal with it. You make dark jokes and I guess move on with life. What yeah. the fuck else do we got? So we'll see if I'm alive for the next episode. Shut up. Don't you fucking dare. God damn it, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're not, 
who do I get to fill in for you? That's a great question. You know, I'll bring this back. I'm going to bring something from the bottom of the list up to the top because I was going to ask this during advice time. But if you're dead next week and you need a new co-host, maybe I got to start fucking mending shit with my other friend. Because it's been over a month and still nothing. And now it's like, God fucking damn it. I really got to be the better fucking person. Do you? Do I? Or, you know, when giving someone the silent treatment doesn't necessarily work if they don't know why you're mad. But I would assume that this person knows you're mad fucking clearly this isn't the normal you know yeah and i don't know it just why do you have to be the one because this can't go on like this are you prepared to have an argument not right now because but there are ebbs and flows in my attitude in my days where I'm like I could fight right now (laughs) I could go you want to go go I would just be very careful when you do choose to engage that's why I shut the fuck up the first time this wasn't like a weaponized act of um silent treatment okay this was I'm shutting the fuck up before I say something real goddamn nasty And also be prepared that behaviors or actions may not change. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Why would they know? I mean, I'm all for olive branches if you think that that's what the best thing is for you. But you also have to be prepared that it's not going to be a neat little package with a bow on it. Yeah, as we've talked about closure before, things don't end in a sitcom way, you know? I just want you to be prepared that it may, it it could go one of two ways and just be prepared to be okay with either of those. Yeah. Um, so maybe I should not do that. And instead, I should be the worst person. <gasps> Oh my god, maybe I should be worse, not better. Now, what exactly does that mean? Making snotty comments on Maine? Mm -hmm. Wait, on what? Like, on Maine. Like, you know, when people say, oh, you're horny on Maine? You know. (sighs) Okay. Like, uh, let's say uh, an Instagram picture of, like, something, right? And I make a comment if it's someone hot and, you know, I make a public comment of like, you know, horniness of their attractiveness. That's, you know, horny on me. So that, that, okay. All right. I, I mean, has there been any, nothing, haven't heard nothing through the grapevine either. I'm not stirring pots, so I don't know. If you feel like you're ready for the good, bad, and ugly of this person to be back in your life, then... But see that face. (laughs) Uh, I gotta control my face. Yeah. Because I said that... Maybe a fight needs to happen then. Yeah, because if you can't even think about that without that visceral reaction... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, like, um, this quote before. I got to find it. It's from, I started following this person because she's got the same first name as me, Nadine. (laughs) And she's got, like, cool feminist stuff. And she said something before that was, like, really fucking relevant. Oh, thanks, but I didn't ask for advice. That's it. That's the, Mm -hmm. that's the tweet. That's it. Yeah. And. You know, like, if this uh, conversation or argument is supposed to occur, 
that's going to be a fucking driving theme. So. And I think at the end of the day, like you have to lay out your boundaries and your expectations. And sometimes you have to break something down to build it up stronger. Or sometimes it just burns to the ground. Mm. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm going to wait until a day I feel a little bit spunky and maybe just be chaotic and see where that leads me. All right. Maybe I'll say something snotty in the group chat. Revive that shit. Revive a bridesmaid's chat or something. All right. There we go. That's it. I really brought it back. I was like moving all the agenda pieces around. Well, I mean, we can just talk about more X. Oh, man. I was... Here is the meat of it, okay? Here's the meat. I wasn't going to do this. I had texted you an ick that I encountered. And I'm um, like, we could put this on the show. And then I thought about it, I'm like, no, we shouldn't talk about this on the show because it's about my husband and I don't want to, like, badmouth him, right? Then I was saying something to him the other day. And I'm like, oh, you listen to my podcast. He's like, no, I don't listen to it. Yeah, that face. Mm. My husband doesn't listen to my podcast. Okay. I mean, he and lives he lives your podcast. Like that's kind of what he said. <laughs> He's like, I hear enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, I, I don't, get it. I don't blame him, but I mean that just means go for it. Here you go. All right. Here's my ick. Here's my ick. Do we all know what an ick is, or do I have to explain this like uh, rosy thorn buds? I, I think we're good. An ick is an ick. An ick is an ick. All right. It's not a deal and breaker, but ugh, don't. It doesn't make me wet. I'll tell you that much. Okay. <laughs> There's no gushing happening over this. Drier than the Sahara Desert. Oof. Just clammed shut. All right. This is going to sound so specifically petty, but. Have you ever seen these like little soup bowl shaped pot holders to put a hot bowl in? Yeah, okay. they're like always at craft fairs and stuff. Yeah. So you could like get your hot soup from the microwave and eat your soup and you won't burn your little hands. I don't like seeing a man use this. It's very unmasculine to me. I'm going to get some hate for some gender stereotyping, but... In my cis het life over here, I don't want to see my man using a hot bowl pot holder. Hot bowl pot holder. <laughs> That's hard to say. I don't know why. Just like have hot little fingertips for a minute, okay? Just like you're not going to scald your hand off. I know that microwaves don't heat things evenly or for some reason... You get a hot bowl and some room temperature soup, but don't use the pot holder. If you have a woman that you want to have sex with, maybe she shouldn't see you. Oh, my soup is too hot for my hands. Oh my God, you eat my soup so carefully. I don't like it. Did you mean to sound like Adam Sandler? Because you just totally sounded like Adam (laughs) Sandler there. Okay. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> I just I just need you to, in that voice to be like, happy to be. Happy to be. Want yep. to touch the high knee. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, eat soup like a man. I don't even know if there's a manly way to eat soup, but with a special little pot holder cozy is not it. That ties into my first ick, which is... Oh. Oh. When you're eating soup or anything, close your fucking mouth. I don't want to hear you masticate. I don't want to hear you slurping <laughs> your soup. Yeah, yeah, I said masticate. Stop it. I don't. Sorry, you brought me back to Adam Sandler days. I'm not going to be mature. Wait, was the expectation that you would be? No. Okay, cool. No, if I'm saying that the way someone eats 
soup is making my pussy dry. I don't think I'm being very mature in the first place. Yes. Yeah. But I don't want to hear you slurp your soup. I don't want to see you chew. I don't want to hear you chew. No, thank you. Keep your food to yourself. Is there someone in your life who is an ick in this regard? My brother. I could see that. Who I legitimately sit across from from at dinner. And many a times I'm like, close your goddamn mouth. Go eat outside. <laughs> so Go sit on the curb. <laughs> So yes, that is my ick. Now, your second ick isn't even, it doesn't have anything to do with your life. No, no. And I uh, decided against uh, texting your husband about this ick. This is so fucking weird, okay? You make a sweet sandwich. We're talking peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And a bread, you put that on. What are I, the breads you would use? I personally like a good whole grain. Maybe All right. wheat. Normal choice. You got your white bread, ideal for mm-hmm. peanut butter and jelly. Whole wheat, something brown, whatever it looks like it's got oats in it, right? That's cool too. Uh, here's what is wrong completely. And don't do it. But if you do this, write into us at uh, Nadine and Mandy Show at gmail.com, right? Uh, it does not go on rye bread. Okay, so let me first and foremost talk about the producer note that, yes, most men, <laughs> most men do not pack their wives a lunch. So I will f- be the first person to say that I am spoiled as fuck when it comes to my husband. It's and, very nice that he does that. And I want to say it was the last time we were recording He offered to make me a lunch, and I just said, I want a PB&J. I get to work the next morning (laughs) and find out it's on rye bread. Did you eat it? I did not. Okay, good. So (laughs) he and I have had this discussion before because, well, he also doesn't like jelly, really. Like, he would just prefer a peanut butter sandwich. But he has that peanut butter sandwich on rye bread. And I'm just like, Uh what are you talking about? We have Italian bread right here. Like, what is wrong with you? So I understand liking rye bread. Rye bread is great. Love rye bread. Do not get me wrong. I love a rye bread. And I love a PB and J. Just not together. No. It what like I'm trying to really break down where this originated. Is this familial? Did his family teach him this? I don't know. I can't see them doing that. And I'm sure that there's something that I eat that he thinks is disgusting. Probably, like, I like liverwurst. Really? Yeah. And I I have never met a human under 50 who will say that. If it is in the house, I will eat it. And I will eat it on rye bread. What is it like? I've never even had it. Is it like bologna? No, it's, I don't know. It's like a spread almost. Oh. Mm. It, it looks like bologna to me. It's, it's a weird acquired taste that it was in the house growing up because that it just was. And so like he probably thinks that's disgusting, which I'm sure it is. It is gross, but most of what we eat is gross. If I'm going to pick on another ick that's food related... Mike eats some things that I don't like. And um, one of them is Vienna sausages. He'll eat them like right out of the little can. Mm -mm. No, thank you. The other thing, and this is apparently a normal Hispanic thing to do with your leftover rice. Uh, You have it for breakfast and put an egg on top of it. Mm -hmm. No, I don't like eggs. So that's my own ick. Yeah. But. All right, well, since we're on food icks, my second ick is my dad does not like sauces or dips or toppings on stuff. Like, he won't put cheese on his pasta. He doesn't like gravy. He doesn't like extra sauces. So what does he eat? Like, dry pasta? Like, yeah. 
like like if we have sauce mixed like we'll put a little bit of sauce in the pasta to like i don't know like so it doesn't clump up but then he won't put any sauce on top of it oh like so no- he doesn't like wet foods it sounds yeah. like and i am like the opposite like i'm always like saucing or dipping or oh yeah i like a nice condiment yeah like and blake he likes some sauces but others not so much oh i got a sauce for you here's what you do next time you have pizza have you is this a thing by you the hot honey yeah it's so good on pizza i love it it's okay have you tried it i have it's the best on a supreme pizza with all the toppings Mm -mm. see i don't like supreme pizza I like the toppings. I like toppings. I like condiments. This is why I could see uh, watching your dad eat things in a very specific way. Could, um, you know, between the way your dad will eat a dry food and then Kyle's sitting there with his mouth open. (laughs) What can I say? Family dinner's canceled. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my... uh my second ick and your third ick is also very particular uh dane cook is 51 years old and he just married his longtime partner kelsey taylor age 24 after six years of dating and i think that his wife's ick must be when he doesn't get the pizza lunchables at the store Hey, I like a good pizza Lunchable. I've never had a Lunchable. (laughs) I need more food than that. What am I going to do with a Lunchable? Stack up like three of them and go to town? Man, I can get down on a pizza Lunchable. I could now if someone gave me one. Okay. And doubling down on the icks. This is someone else's specific ick. And I will find the TikTok where I saw this originally. Do you heat up a pizza Lunchable? No. That's the right answer. But somebody is insisting that it's pizza and pizza is meant to be hot. And you are supposed to microwave your pizza Lunchable to make it a pizza. In the fucking third grade, you don't have a microwave in the cafeteria. But if you had one, would you be microwaving a Lunchable? No. 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 Absolutely not. No. See, we're right. That's weird. It's weird that someone is, first of all, grown up and eating Lunchables for lunch. But then they're like, imagine you go into your break room at work and you see a grown person in their little blue button down shirt and khakis with a Lunchable. (laughs) Yes. Assembling their little Lunchable with their sauce packet on a plate as though they're trying to be in chopped and then putting in the microwave. To get, like, that perfect bubbly cheese. That cheese ain't melting. I can also just see them, like, in front of the microwave watching it with their Capri Sun (laughs) going. Oh, my God. I ain't knocking Capri Suns. Those are bomb. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that it's a problem. But I'm also not saying I go out and buy pizza Lunchables to eat. I'm just saying if one happened to become, to be in my fridge, I wouldn't say no. You wouldn't say no to a pizza Lunchable. I wouldn't eat that if that was packed in your lunch. Unlike peanut butter and jelly on rye. What did you have for lunch that day? Chipotle, maybe? Uh, No, uh, I was lucky enough that our client meeting had leftovers. Mm. I love a good free work food. Exactly. Um, So my third ick. Uh Uh-huh. Is hard seltzers. They're disgusting. Okay. They taste like TV static. <laughs> All right. I, like, I'll give you that. They smell good. But there's just no. It doesn't taste like pineapple. It just tastes like disappointment. And Are we talking a sp- specific brand or across Uh, the board across the board i've tried numerous different kinds and they all just taste like disappointment just drink the fucking alcohol 
just don't drink you're entitled to this ick i totally get it it's bland seltzer is bland hard or soft okay but hard seltzer uh acts as a mixer okay you got your alcohol it's mixer has alcohol now and then it's called sharpening your claws i'm talking about the people who will just sit and drink white claw after white claw after white claw like i'll drink it don't get me wrong i i like it for a light alcohol buzz going on but it's not like I'm trying to convince myself that I like something almost. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It's not flavorful. It's not sweet. It's not unsweet. The ones who go sugar free end up tasting weird and hollow. The ones who are just like not sugar free, which naturally just don't have that much sugar added. They're just like, again, TV static. I feel like most people drink them. Because they're trying to, like, watch calories or sugar or whatever. How about you just drink a little less but have full flavor? I feel like it's a viable option when I am at a place that has beers or, like, and I don't I don't like beer. And I'm not going to pretend that I do anymore. I'm not a beer person, but... I will have like a cider like I like um like cider boys or like those and if those aren't an option I will drink water I will drink soda and I just won't get drunk like okay I'm also just to the point now where if I'm drinking I know the end game the end game is either a couple social or I'm getting wasted there's no in between (laughs) This doesn't sound like an alcohol problem at all. (laughs) Well, I just don't, I also don't drink very often. These seltzers are a waste of my time. I'm not even getting drunk. (laughs) It's not even the not getting drunk. It's the not having any flavor. For as little as I do drink, I want to, like, I want it to be happy. Can I tell you one that does have flavor? Sure. I would love to try one with flavor. Sunny D. Oh, yes. I've had that one. But Isn't see, it good? I, yes, but I don't consider that a seltzer. What is it? I, don't, I think that's like a malt drink. That's like a Mike's Hard Lemonade or a Smirnoff in my eyes. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I got um because Sonic there's like, hard seltzers. Uh huh. And they were disappointing. But like the Sunny D has juice in it. It literally has the Sunny D in it. Okay. Which negates the whole seltzer point because you. You have a mixer in there. That That is true. I think you're right where it's probably a malt thing. But then what is seltzer even? Is seltzer not a malt thing? I don't know. I don't but know. It's just, it's it's sad. It's just, drink the damn... It doesn't spark joy for you. No. Because it, it just, it doesn't have flavor. Like, I ordered a pineapple one over the weekend. And I was like, oh, pineapple. It literally, it tasted... Like Hawaii Five O, like the reboot just <laughs> it just failed. It let you down. It let it me just... down so much. Oh, let you down hard. But like I'm even to the point now where if I drink Lacroix or whatever, I will add one of those flavor packets to it. I don't like drinking flavored seltzer if it's not hard. See, That's a waste of my time. I will drink the LaCroix with like a flavor packet, like so that I have like sparkling water. Does it over bubble when you add the stuff to it? No. Hmm. Okay. So like for instance, like my favorite one right now is coconut LaCroix with a pineapple packet. Hmm. So it's like a pina colada. But the coconut LaCroix by itself, it tastes like fucking Hawaiian tropic. Like the sunscreen. Sunscreen. Okay. <laughs> do you know what sunscreen tastes like? I you think, know what we do. I, I was think we say, know. All of us have sprayed or like we, <laughs> you know, like eaten a sandwich or something after we put sunscreen on. So we all know it just yeah. doesn't taste good. Oh, it doesn't taste 
good. We don't like eating sunscreen at all. We are not advising that. It's so not good. You know what is good, though? I got a drink recommendation. We okay. got our ix of what's no good. I don't like beer. You don't like hard seltzers. Here's what's good. It's fall. You like a nice apple cider? All right. You get... You could do this with hard cider. All right. So here's two versions. You get a hard cider mm -hmm. and put a little caramel vodka in it. All right. I am so glad you did not say fireball. You can. Because I was about to go. But I will take um, regular cider, you know, not hard. It's so good. Put in caramel vodka. I don't like salted caramel. Just get the regular caramel. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like salted fucking anything keep my sweets sweet all right and i know you vomit at the thought of uh fireball but after i add a little bit of the caramel vodka to it i'll do a splash of the fireball for the cinnamon goodness no thank you mm -mm. but the rest of it sounds good just not with the fireball. it is and you can make it uh as a hot drink too if you like a hot cider i prefer mine cold uh, non-alcohol version is I like a chider. What the fuck? It's literally chai tea in the place of water for apple cider. Is this like a Starbucks thing? No. Um, at work, we used to have like a uh, hot apple cider okay. in, the, in the fall. And I would steep a chai tea oh, packet in it. Oh, okay, like the Keurigs. Yeah, or just like a like a actual tea bag, like putting a tea right. bag in there. Um, I was like trying to figure out like replace the water with tea. I'm like, what water? Yeah, but yeah, we had those um cider K cups at work too. Yeah, but chai and cider together is delicious. I could see that being good. So now what booze would pair with that? Honestly, again, with the caramel vodka. Mm -hmm. I bet a little bourbon, too. See, I'm not a bourbon person. I'm not either, but I I'll put it in some fall beverages. It goes good. All I right. like if you see me drinking brown liquor on its own. Ask me how I'm doing, because it's not good. There's something going on in my life. <laughs> Noted. I know. Um. One time where I was drinking the brown water was when um hurricane happened, lost power. The horrible one, Hurricane Sandy, that sucked ass. And when the power went out, I'm like, you know what? I think it is bourbon time. So that would explain it, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. like a good barometer for how how situation is going for me. All right. So we're loving fall beverages, but what else are you loving lately? Um, this is gonna sound so fucking boring and suburban. Oh, just wait until you get to my. Oh, <laughs> it's a new cat litter system I got. Um, we always use you know clumping litter, cat box, normal shit, right? <laughs> shit, because it's a cat box. Dun, but dun, I got dun, dun. I got the tidy cat breeze system where it's like a special box, special litter, and a special tray insert. And because my sensory thing, another one of my icks, I don't like, I don't like particles on my feet, but I also don't like wearing socks all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, cat litter tracks, no matter how many different, uh, mats I tried to get to go underneath that, to keep litter from tracking, it tracks, but these things are like big pellets and they're like hard and they don't track and, there's no smell going on in my house. I'm really liking it. It's way, way, way easier on the upkeep. I'm very happy with this. Works for me. I know I know nothing about cats or cat litter, so I'm glad you're happy. Let me tell you, you got cats. They shit in a box. That's what's going on. I got two furry assholes pissing and shitting in a box. And someone's got to keep up with it. So well then. Yeah. What's your boring suburban thing you're liking a lot? Somehow my TikTok algorithm started me on dry erase marker testing. 
So what? It's, it's literally this teacher who gets sent dry erase markers and it's her just writing on a whiteboard. Huh. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's ASMR of like the sound of the whiteboard or I I'm truly invested. Is this yellow going to be a yellow marker or is it going to be a dud? Is that this is- going to influence your whiteboard purchasing? No, because I don't have a whiteboard. That's the <laughs> worst part is I have no skin in the whiteboard game. But for some reason, I find myself every morning going, oh, did so-and-so post another one? Oh, I hope this brand works. Like, And like for some reason, not all whiteboard sets have a yellow marker. So I get really excited when there's a yellow hmm. marker. This and- is a world I wouldn't have even thought was a niche. You know, I have no idea how my TikTok algorithm got there, but I will find myself sitting and like rating these dry erase markers with her. It is an illness and I don't know <laughs> how I got on it, but now I can't stop. That is an ASMR that's sparking a joy in you. It's like watch. I like uh, watching people do calligraphy or like doing nails. Um, the thing that my algorithm has brought to me on TikTok uh elk mating season in Alaska you and I have two completely (laughs) different TikToks no but let me explain I'm not watching elk fuck yet (laughs) they out there trying right they're courting so you got this guy this elk guy he's huge right much bigger than the females Uh, he's out there trying to fuck he's trying to get to get his lady of the season maybe multiple ladies I don't know what their monogamy issue is right but they yell. They go out there and like, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, it's so loud because the person who's filming this on their phone does not have like uh, advanced, like they're not miking up an elk, you know? And you could hear this loud, like fucking loud. Like this thing is mad horny. Like he's angry about how much he wants to fuck. And you can't get close to these elk because they'll fuck. They're huge. Do you know how big an elk is? Do you have elk there in Wisconsin? I'm, sh- I'm sure we do, but I live in the city. I I know, but you see things, right? Yeah. Like you've been out of the city. However, I just would like to thank you because you have now made my dry erase marker TikTok seem normal. <laughs> yeah, it gets weird. I don't know. But the algorithm knows, like it sent it to me. It knew you would watch dry erase marker talk. It knew I would watch horny elks. We are not the same, but it caters to our needs that we didn't even know we had. Exactly. And with that, I think that's the perfect way to end. Wait, have I sent you the elks? No. You send me an elk and I'll send you a dry erase. All right. Uh, I started sending my friend Wendy Elks because we were also talking about the weird specific shit that like TikTok will give to us. She's been into something of her own. I'm like, have you seen elk mating season? Because I'm like, if it's giving it to me, is it giving it to other people who have similar interests to me? She's like, no, I'm not on elk talk. But yeah, I will have this um, post. I'll repost it from our account. I'll send it to our... uh, our sandwich loving uh producer, you know, who uh definitely likes normal sandwiches. Very normal sandwiches and we love him very much. <laughs> yes, we do. We we do love him very much. Thank you for making my lunches, honey. Yeah, I didn't get a lunch, but that's okay. All right. Well, all right. Yeah. I'll see you on Elk Talk then. Yeah, and I'll see you on Marker Talk. Yeah. Um and we'll do this again in 2 weeks. And I'll Yeah, have, I like it. I'll have a bunch of shit to talk about then. So maybe I will too. We'll see if you're alive. Yeah, yeah. If if I'm alive, if not, I hope you find a good co-host. Um, if Mandy dies, uh, why don't you uh, DM me or send me an email if you'd like to uh, be my new co-host here? Uh, Twitter, we're at Nadine Mandy Show. I'm at Shoe Booty. You're at Curvy Knockout. Same kind of shit on Threads. And our email address is Nadine and Mandy Show at Gmail dot com. What she said. So with that, I'm Mandy. I'm Nadine. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. I'm going to end this and we'll get going.